The healing of our body's ills with plant drugs is one of the oldest forms of healing known. From archaeological and anthropological evidence, it's certain that our earliest forebears made use of the abundance of plants around them to treat their many and varied ailments. Some of the earliest surviving texts are on medicinal plants. The Chinese herbal pensao of Shen Nang was written around 2800 BC and described 366 medicinal plants. Also, the remains of medicinal plants have been found in the pharaoh's tombs. With our present heavy reliance on the antibiotic revolution and the fast-paced supermarket-oriented way of living, many people tend to think of the herbal medicine as old-fashioned, primitive, and dying out. Well, it's time to think again. Herpa medicine is still the most widely used form of medicine in the world. It's the primary form of health care for 75% of the world's population. Over 60% of drugs that are used by doctors today were originally derived from plants. And the search for new drugs from plant sources is a multi-million dollar business. In many countries throughout the world, it's studied at universities and is available as part of those countries' health care service. In China, for example, medical students choose to study either Western medicine or acupuncture and Chinese medicine. The use of plant drugs is a major element in their healthcare system. In many clinical situations in Europe, doctors prescribe herbal medicine alongside allopathic medicine. The herbs are dispensed by pharmacists, having been manufactured from the crude plant form into medicine by well-known drug companies and used to treat various symptoms and diseases. One of the most common symptoms that have been treated by medicinal plants throughout history is cough. But what's cough? Cough is a symptom that is experienced by all people at one time or another. Simply, it's the body's way of removing foreign material or mucus from the lungs and throat. There are two general classifications of cough. Productive cough, producing mucus from the lungs, and non-productive cough. Also, there is acute cough lasting less than three weeks and chronic cough lasting more than three weeks. Acute cough is most often caused by the common viral upper respiratory tract infection. The cough is usually secondary to stimulation of nasal, pharyngeal and laryngeal mucosa receptors. This results from the secretion of nose and sinuses draining into the throat. Chronic cough may be caused by a variety of underlying diseases such as asthma, chronic post-nasal drips, and smoking, which is a major cause of chronic cough. Chronic cough also is a very common problem in children. Viral infections are the most prevalent cause. Passive smoking also makes an important contribution. Chronic productive cough with prolonged sputum is always a reason for concern in children. However, the frequent use of antibiotics in treating such cases leads to more resistant strains of microbes to emerge. Throughout the 20th century, several herbs and medicinal plants were investigated for their effect as cough remedy. Out of these plants and herbs is thyme herb. Since the 30s up to the 90s, over 20 studies and investigations have been carried out on thyme herb which have proven beyond doubt its expectorant and secretolytic activity. Also, the phenolic component of thyme oil, especially thymol, has an antimicrobial effect that exceeds the antimicrobial effect of phenol by 13 times. And that's confirmed by more than 10 studies in the 70s, 80s and the 90s, substantiating its therapeutic benefit in inflammation of upper respiratory tract. Another plant which has been extensively studied for the last 50 years is Primula root, which showed a great expectorant activity and mucolytic power. This is mainly due to its saponine content. One hypothesis suggests that saponine, 
due to its surface activity, when orally administered may favor the liquefaction of viscous mucus in the bronchial tract. Thus, secretion is facilitated. The reduced viscosity of the mucus is also accompanied by normalization of ciliary activity, which in turn enhance mucociliary clearance. Also, many investigations have shown that saponine content of primula root exert an antifungal and some antimicrobial activity. Introducing bronchicum elixir S with the magnificent combination of thyme and primula root as the ideal cough remedy with the triple action. The expectorant, bronchospasmolytic, and antibacterial activity of thyme component, which is complemented by the secretolytic mucolytic activity of primula root, enhancing mucociliary clearance. The synergistic action of both components allow bronchicum elixir S to be the answer when cough is the question. Bronchicum can be used in cough, bronchitis, bronchial catarrh, and mucus obstruction of the bronchi. It's platable non-sedating cough syrup and can be used safely from the age of one year. Dose of bronchicum is very simple. One teaspoonful for adults or half teaspoonful for children, taken every three hours up to six times a day. So, triple your therapy. Use Bronchipine.